I have to say that if initially I've had a lot going on in my life and it felt overwhelming. And the first thing I just felt like I just wanted to cry because it's like there's so much going on in my life. And then I feel like the enemy, you know, you think you can just do whatever. And I'm like, no, you you don't get to just do what you want to do. And I said, like I said, when I, when I call them, I have favor. And when I did, they didn't even question it. The first thing the lady said was, we don't do this. And then, and then she proceeded to do it. And I, just, I was just real quiet. But initially, like what I'm saying is, I initially felt like I always feel in those situations. But when I stood up in my place in God, and I, and I spoke it out of my mouth, and then I took the action, God was right there with me. Amen. 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 Who else? Who else? me personally it was stop look and listen because I'm walking a rough walk right now so I need to start listening to him more amen we all did and the reason why I'm asking the reason why I'm asking is is that I'm talking to you about living in the spirit and, and what prophetic living is all about it is hearing from God and then activating what we hear by what we do and how we respond in, in, the, in, in those ways and it's it really interesting and, and I, I know that Cindy and, and Patrick are, have a major testimony of, uh, that'll be told at a later time just happened this week just claiming those things so what happened with you is this week already just by why be, not because that wasn't true before prophetically when something is revealed by taking the power of that revealed word and living it produces results that's living prophetically it's hearing from God living by God, living by what you hear and activating those things and making a decision that I'm going to live in what I know, not what I feel. And in doing so, taking that. Anybody else, just things you may have heard from the Lord this past Sunday. Yes. The revelation that I got is I can't look at the things in the natural realm that I've been obedient and there's a harvest I have not received but yet everything seems like it's coming against me and I'm not receiving what I should and that I have to choose to believe in who he is and the promises and like you said choose and make change my decision and I know it's coming amen 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 who else I, for me, it was personally about paying more, not just the 10%, just paying more. Even what I'm sowing into, what I want to receive, going beyond that. It's not a set amount. It was a set amount then, but because of the revelation that's coming forth, to us, it shouldn't even be a set amount. <laughs> like 10% is where we start? Yeah, <laughs> I get it. But, but I know for you, what you just said, I love it. Because really, you, you remember that um, email that I read to you all? It was so powerful. But what the email kept saying over and over was, it's a matter of the heart. It's a matter of heart priorities. It's a matter of the heart. And, uh, and in uh, this man's statement towards the end, which was, I'm asking God to help me help me to respond to the grace that's on my life what has God graced me to do I love that it made me say that same made me ask myself that same question what has God graced me to do because the truth is if all I do ever is live by the 10% law and, and we should obey that but if I do it as obedience and, and, and I know I better do it it's like giving God pay money I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give ten percent, so he'll rebuke the devil. It's. It's. There's no difference in that than paying the mafia. It is. It's like a proving point because he says, "Prove me now." And if we're only proving him at ten percent, 
then that's where we stop it. But he's always constantly telling us to prove him. Proving him on a daily basis. Amen. And I think it's about shifting our minds again. <clears throat> Living prophetically means hearing from God. It really means that I seek God about everything. I, I listen for God in everything. What does God want me to do? What does God want me to do? No, we're talking particularly about Sunday and the uh, tithe and the offering particularly. But it's about everything. Everything. But I mean in that particular area, I don't know. Maybe we should ask God before we walk into service on Sunday morning. When we know we're going to bring our offering, we know we're going to present our tithe. Maybe we should be asking God, what is it that you want me to do? Um, I'm saying maybe we all should do that. I'm saying maybe Pastor Shirley needs to do that more than I do that. I, I ask the Lord. We always ask the Lord, especially in the offerings. You know, what, what do you want us to do? Or what are you saying? But you know that becomes a part of your life. It's a matter of the heart. Amen. And I really feel like that by the end of this year, that several major hurdles that we faced individually and corporately, I feel that we are going to see a resolution of some of those major hurdles that have seemed to be limiting and holding back and holding us down or whatever it is. You, suddenly moments are coming. What that did when you spoke on Sunday is it created unity in the body in a new and a different way. We never think of unity in terms of money, but when we all get on the same page, then there's nothing that can stop us. And it's happening. It's coming. You're right. By the end of the year. You Absolutely. think that's it? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> She's confirming it. All right. I do. I do feel that. I do feel that. And I think especially, I want to say this, I think especially for businesses, I do believe that there is a turning in the atmosphere. And many businesses have stayed faithful and holding on. And, you know, it's been, it's been sketchy. You got to make payrolls and you got to do things and all of that. But I really do believe that there is a turnaround anointing in the atmosphere for, uh, and I, it's not, it's for everybody. I just kept seeing this almost like new contracts and new, new things that are coming as well. And, uh, well, I guess I could say that all the teachers, y'all got a new contract. That's what I heard, right? Who are the teachers? Y'all got a new contract, didn't you? This week. <laughs> so, and the teachers have not had a raise in how long? That's what I'm saying. It's been two years, which there usually is a cost of living and all that kind of stuff that's kind of built in. They haven't had a raise in two years. And, but this week, that's what I'm saying. How's your, how's your business going? It's going. We had a standby, and that's my testimony. My husband hurt his back um, around Crystal's wedding. <laughs> and he hasn't really been able to work for probably almost a month and a half to two months, and he's the main breadwinner in our home. So um, that kind of rocked us pretty hard. But through everything, he's seen me pay my tithes, and he's never, ever said, don't pay that. He'll just be like, it's looking kind of low over there, and I'm stroking the check. <laughs> but through that, he has learned that um, through my giving, God's kept us afloat. We've never needed, wanted anything. I mean, everything is paid to date. We're not behind on anything. And he told me through that testimony, I need to start coming to church more and I need to start paying my tithes too. <laughs> <laughs> what is his first name again? Devin. Devin. Y'all, you can't tell him. Don't ever. Oh, does he ever watch this? No. Well, Devin, if you're watching, <laughs> we got your number, brother. <laughs> Let's call Devin in. Let's just call Devin into the fullness. 
Devin's a great guy, great guy. And uh, it, absolutely. And so I believe that God, God wants to capture him fully Amen. into all that God has. Can we all agree with that? Amen. For Devin right now in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Who else? And if you want to sit down, you can, but I'm, I'm just, just stay close. Just stay close here. Who else? I don't know, Caroline. Do y'all want to give a testimony of any sort? Look at, look at, he said, no, no. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Um, I, I wasn't here Sunday, but I, I was raised in church. Things that happen in life, me on and off. Um, but if there's something I've, I've learned through my life is how important tithing is. I've seen people, you know, come from poverty, you know, giving their tithes and just come out of that and, you know, starting business, improving in their lives. And uh, for many years, even though I haven't been faithful to God, I still give my tithe because I'm a firm believer that if you do give your tithes, God will provide. Um, a while back, uh, I lost my job. I, I was probably without a job for like, I don't know, a year and a half, almost two years. And I mean, I kept giving my tithe and God provided. We never missed a payment on our house. We always have food on our table. And just God is just good to us. I mean, I'm a firm believer about tithing and here we are. I mean, rough times, uh, our relationship, work, and thanks to my Lord and Savior, we're now about to get married as well. So thank you, Jesus. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. <laughs> I know. Um, well, on a personal level, uh, like he said, we've been through some interesting times where, you know, he was going through school. You know, he lost his job. He was in the building industry and whatnot and that just literally went down and so we found ourselves with just the one income putting him through school and we had our, our daughter was little I mean Jonna was six months or something it was it was kind of rough and you know we just even though you kind of go on and off there, there's just that in the back of your head that tells you that you're gonna be okay you're, just, you're gonna be okay you're gonna be okay and this started give or take four years ago a little bit less than that been through all heck and back. Um, he's now graduated. He's an aircraft mechanic. And uh, he had to be out of state for a while to make some things fall into place, although we didn't like it at all. And we thought that was the end of it. It actually was the beginning of a whole lot of different things that we would have never known. Um, I graduated this last month. Woo! So, yeah. So now he's out of school. I'm out of school. We both have jobs. You know, everything in our life is pretty much kind of falling into place. Um, we got, I got a raise, he's getting a raise, his, you know, his schedule shifts around, but it's really weird because every time they put him in a different schedule, it's, it's because it's going to work out for us. It's, it just happens. So, too many good things happening this year end, I think. Awesome. We can't complain. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's awesome. You know, the deal is that <clears throat> when we present our tithes, we are... We are declaring uh, our covenant. One of the things I didn't discuss on 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 Sunday morning, um, the tithe really is not only obedience to God, but it is also a declaration of our covenant with God. In the same way that God, how do you know? Let me exp ask this: How do you know that God has a covenant with you? How do you know that? The first first thing, you know, the Bible says that we we have to um, know that first of all we have to believe that God is and that He is the rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. 
it, the, the knowing the covenant of God is in place comes by first knowing that he is. It's faith. The first part, how do you know you have a covenant with God? You know that by faith. You have to believe that he is who he says he is the great I am. So that's the first part of it. But that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In other words, that he also rewards. <laughs> so God proves his covenant to us by being the same never changing by staying by staying always uh on track with his own word making sure see when god says it he is his word and when he says it he he stands up for it he's gonna right how do we know that we know that because he activates that covenant by healing our diseases by taking care of us, being our provider, all the things that he is. That's how we know that he is a covenant-keeping God. That's how we can believe. That's why when we get sick, we know we can, we can believe God or we can have someone pray for us in agreement because we know that he is a covenant-keeping God. Amen? Amen? How does he know? that we are in covenant with him. Obedience. obedience. And what does obedience produce? Well, the Bible says those who are willing and obedient will eat the fat or the abundance of the land. That it is our willingness, first of all, our yes to God, how does he know? Well, it's not only the fact that we say yes, but it is that we obey what we agree to. We are a covenant-keeping people. It works that way. God keeps his end of the covenant even when we're not faithful. He remains faithful. But if we want to be a covenant people, that means that we respond covenantally to God. That's why, even though I might not understand him, even though there are things that I may feel he didn't do the way I thought he should, that I'm in covenant with him. Therefore, I do not betray him. I do not serve other gods because I don't feel that he's being the kind of God I want right now. It means that I've made a lifetime and eternal commitment. The, the yes in my mouth was eternal when I, when I said it. And, and as a result of that, I do the things, I obey him. And I prove my covenant by the actions that I take, not just the words that I speak. There are a lot of people who, walk, who talk the talk who do not walk the walk. So it comes to this. Tithing becomes a, an activation and proof of the covenant I have with God. I'm performing on my end of the covenant. In the same way, he always performs his end of the covenant. So this is one of the ways that we prove we have a covenant with God. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm getting excited about all this. And you know what? It always takes a crisis to get a revelation. I'm convinced of that. <laughs> it's so hard to get a revelation when everything's going good. And uh, financially, I needed a revelation. So what do you do? Well, I, I go to God. I, I need to understand what's going on. I, I, I did every, and in that, I got a revelation. In the crisis, and many of us don't understand that the crisis we're going through, we want to blame people, we want to look to other, but the crisis, whatever it is, is really about pushing us to a revelation of him and who he is and his word to us. So no matter where you are, what you feel, or no matter how pressured you are, instead of looking around at others trying to get relief from it, get a revelation. Hallelujah. Yeah. Would you come just do it on the microphone yeah. for me? 
um, I've learned that we take that for granted so many times. And like you were saying, he, you know, God didn't act like I wanted him to. The, this thing did not come through like I had planned it. This, you know, th this job did not come through like I had planned it. This person did not come through for me as I have. And you know what? It doesn't matter because we take it for granted so many times that God's got us. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, he's got you. It doesn't really right. matter. And, and I've learned that by looking around in my office. And I, you know, sometimes you sit there and you think, oh, I'm just a good person. So, you know, all these good things happen to me. Well, no, no. I mean, this world is not good to anybody. <laughs> Just seriously, I've, I've learned by hearing the people that work with me and listening to the stories and the things that they go through and how they live and what happens to them. And I just, I can't sit there and say that I am that good a person because I, 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 I have done worse than they have maybe. Or, I mean, I wasn't bo born a good person. I, all I can say is I've learned to not take that for granted. I am um, I don't deserve everything I have. I know that. <laughs> but I have it. And they don't. And they know the difference. And when they see you, they don't see the loser they see in everybody else. They see you're different. And they see that you're, you know, your life works different. And you get different things. And you get good things. And, you know, and, and yes, you get frustrated and you get mad. But then you pull right through and you keep moving along. And they're like, how on earth do people do this? Yes, amen. You know, and, and I've learned that. Just don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. He's always there. That's awesome. I think, and I think you're right. You know, so many times what we, what we spend our time talking about or seeing is the lack or what we don't have. And what about all those other things? That's why he says in everything, give thanks. But this is the will of God. That's why we live that, that, our, that our tongues speak, that are filled with the praises of him who called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Um, you know, what is it in, in uh, Peter? Um, uh, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. That we should, right? Show forth the praises of him who called us out of darkness and his marvelous light. In other words, we were called to demonstrate God's goodness. But if you don't know God is good, and if you don't live from the standpoint of God is good, then you won't demonstrate God's goodness. You'll become like the beggar who's always trying to get the next handout from God. And we don't want to ever take it for granted uh, who God is. You want to share it all? Lisa, is it Lisa? Have that. Diana. Diana. <laughs> Diana. I say that. I always forget. Diana, you want to come share a little bit? You. <laughs> come on. Come sit by me. Hallelujah. Come just sit. Just come sit down right here. You're in my living room. You did? Yes. Well, then you're ready <laughs> if you knew that. <laughs> well, no, in particular, um, what she said to me is just about how good it is to find out that God is good. Mm -hmm. And so tell them just a little bit. You don't have to tell them everything. Just. Well, for 15 years, I belonged in the fundamental Baptist faith. Started out... Um, it's probably they compared us to apostolic, but we were Baptists. So it was, um, you know, they, they, I knew of God. I was raised in the church with my grandmother, but we were always, it felt like it was just like a whiplashing every Sunday, just like this. If you do this, you're going to go to, you know, it was just punishment, punishment. I never heard them say that God loved me and that I felt like I had to be perfect. I had to be the perfect wife, the perfect mother, the perfect daughter. I had to please everybody, and it was torment. It was 15 years of just torment. So I work with Cindy, and um, I was married for 15 years, and um, I've been divorced for three, and it's been very, very hard on me because the pastor told me if I divorced my husband, I was going to bring shame upon my children 
and I was going to be regretful and I was manipulated and I was tormented. Um, and I felt, I let me just say <laughs> this much, the divorce uh, was had very good grounds, just know that, and there was a lot of abuse involved. Thank you. Um, so I was lost. I knew how to stand in unity when I was with my congregation, but when I was by myself, I couldn't function. And um, I, was, I was used to the man just telling me what to do, how to live, how to do it, and I felt so comfortable in that shell. Um, today, most women say, how did you get through it? And honestly, there were times when I just wanted to check out. I wanted to just take the gun, put it to my head, and pull the trigger. Um, it was torment. And, and I was dying, and I had to break away from that. And so I worked with Cindy, and I was lost. I was jumping from church to church, trying to find somewhere to go. So when I came here, you know, they taught us in the fundamental world, people who talk in tongues are, oh, that's just, y'all are just, <laughs> that's of the devil. They would give us pamphlets on not to do it. And just so when I came here, everything that I was told not to do, it was done. <laughs> so I would sit over here and I would cry my eyes out because I felt conflict. Because, but I felt the presence of God here. I said, I'm saved, I'm a Christian, God is here. He's here, I can feel it. So I would just cry and cry and cry and I couldn't understand why my soul was just tormented. And finally I just had a revelation one day and I came up front and Crystal was praying over me and Cindy was praying over me and I was, I didn't know what was happening. She was like, you're drunk in the spirit. I'm like, what? I'm drunk in the spirit? And ever since then, I've had like this, it's like this release, like God loves me. He really, really loves me. And it's okay if I wear pants. I, first, <laughs> jeans. Cindy can tell you the first time I put, they made me go in and put jeans on in the office. And I was scared to come out like, God's going to strike me with a lightning bolt. <laughs> so, um. I just wanted to tell you all that being here has been, it's been awesome. Um, it's just, it's been eye-opening and it's just, I mean, God is here and I know that he loves me and um, my children enjoy the church here. They get fed because I ask them and they just really enjoy it. And um, it's okay to listen to a woman preacher. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> because you probably are one, you just don't know it yet. I told Pastor Shirley I was I've been I've been raising my hands, but I don't know about the speaking in tongues yet. Are you not speaking in tongues yet? Oh boy! See, yo puedo hablar en lenguas. We will send the secret squad after you. <laughs> Yeah, Julianne wants to see you later. <laughs> Woo. All righty. You probably are speaking in tongues, and you probably are trying to stop yourself from it more than anything. Because what, it's what begins to start happening when you get in that release and you start worshiping. You almost have to try not to, and uh, just stop trying not to. Okay? Because you kind of already received. You just got to release. Okay? Huh? In the shower, whenever, yeah. But especially in worship, just don't resist. If more people, I feel, receive the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit in that moment when they realize it's, uh, they don't try so hard and they don't resist. Just stop resisting. Just stop resisting. Stop worrying about it and just stop resisting and just receive. That's all you have to do, yeah. So I believe that that will happen for you. So I feel like we are in that place. I'm just delivering, you know, uh, prayer next next Monday night, 6.30, all church prayer. And uh, elders will be here. Our senior, senior team will be here. And uh, we're really encouraging everyone 
everyone to be here, 6.30 to 7.30. Um, it, it, it doesn't, part of what brings the, the kind of breakthrough living we're looking for um, and believing God for comes through um, the place of unity. And um, there's no other time probably that we're in more unity than those moments when we are praying what God is saying. And praying according to the will of God and doing that together. You'll get a personal breakthrough at the same time uh, the church does. And I'm really trying to change my language, guys, so help me. And No, don't, help, don't yell at me, from the, but just pray for me. I really am. I, I really feel like God said to me, it's time for you to stop looking for breakthroughs and to live in breakthrough. And I am doing my best to change a mindset in my own head here that's always you know it's the, so it's not hanging on breakthrough hanging on breakthrough that the that living in the breakthrough is becomes the kind of living victorious living that God has called us to and as a church that we live there as well and we're not you know begging God trying to get through the next season but rather we see every season is building on what God's plan is for us. So we're rejoicing always. We're always thankful. We're always rejoicing. We would get a delay in that room back there. We rejoice over that. We don't get mad. I, that's my problem. I'm the one who gets mad about that stuff. I don't like being delayed ever, ever, ever. Uh, however, I have to understand and, and rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Hallelujah. And uh, we will be walking into that room. I decided I wasn't going to tell y'all anymore. And, and just one Sunday, you're just going to show up. I'm going to say, hey, guess what? We're going back to the other room today. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how, when, and where. But I know that God is in control. The devil is not in control. God, the city is not in control. God is in control. Therefore, I will rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is my reward. Amen. So that's the way we live. That's breakthrough living. Instead of being uh, uh, caught up in the temporal things, but living in breakthrough is that place in God. Understanding the breakthroughs happen. Jesus already broke through the atmosphere. He, he led captivity captive. He broke through the atmosphere. He entered the, the gates of heaven. And when he did and applied his blood to the mercy seat there in the, in the Holy of Holies, there in heaven that once and for all the devil had been put under his feet we 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 do face a defeated foe he's a foe but he's a defeated foe amen so living in that place of of breakthrough living um and that has everything to do with being led by the spirit and understanding how to hear from god and acting on what we hear uh, from God and being obedient. Uh, there's, it's amazing to me. So many people are willing to, you know, they'll just, I just give me a word, just give me a word. I'll do whatever God says, but they're not doing the things they know to do. You got to obey God all the way around. Don't wait for the big dramatic moments to obey God, obey God every day, read the Bible, pray, give your tithe, pre present your tithe, give your offerings, right? Love people. Amen. And then the big things may come along. But if you understand what I'm saying, it's all those what we would call little day-to-day -day things. So we're going to do that as a family, right? Amen. Listen, so um, Sunday, Pastor Loretta and I will be leaving, and uh, Rebecca will be leaving for Africa Sunday afternoon. So we appreciate your prayers. And on Sunday, uh, we'll, we'll make sure that you all lay hands We'll have people lay hands on us, speak in tongues over us, do whatever you can before we get out of here. And uh, I'm excited about that. Um, I'm excited about the fact that even though I will be in Africa, you all will continue and fight the good fight of faith and hold on to God. Our, 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 our tithes and offerings will increase. Our, our membership will increase while we are gone. I will come back to an increased and abundant overflow. Amen. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> No, I believe, and I, I, I've set my faith to that, and 
believing God. We're going to receive uh, our tithe and offering tonight. And you will notice that there are two baskets. Uh, we will be doing this um, Tonight, we can do it all at once, and you can bring your tithe. Uh, if you uh, are tithing, if you uh, need to bring your tithe, this will be the tithe. This will be the offering, okay? And you can bring them both at the same time. But on Sundays, we are going to do two separate times. Are y'all okay? Good. Because even if you want, we're going to do it. <laughs> We are going to do it because we're going to stay. Well, first of all, we're just going to be obedient to what God is showing us to do. Amen. Um, it's essential for us to do that. And it's important to mark on your envelopes as well, um, just in case anything gets um, mixed up. So if you'll stand, please. I'm, I'm in an increasing revelation regarding tithes and offerings, so I'm sure you're, uh, Sunday I'll have more to say um, just uh, over what God is saying about it. But I know one thing, that, that tithe, you give it as worship. I know that. You obey God. Obedience is worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, the first thing I want to do before we receive anything here and present to you, I, I come to you on behalf of your people, Lord, and the people here at Epic Church, the people who have been faithful to you and not perfect people, but people who have loved you. And I thank you, Lord, that there, there is on behalf of each one of them a place of manifestation that they have believed you for, whether that's in their, their relationships, their finances, their health, whatever it is, Lord, whatever the thing is, Lord, that, that the manifestation of your answer for them is here. We call now a fullness in that manifestation and establishment of your word. I thank you for it today, Lord, believing that your word is true knowing that you do not lie, believing that you are and that you are the rewarder of them that diligently seek you. Thank you for rewarding us, Lord. We receive the reward from your very hand. Tonight we do exactly what you have asked us to do. We obey you by presenting to you our tithe, thanking you for the ability to give a portion back. And uh, we bring our offerings tonight, Lord, based on the grace you have given us. Thank you, Lord, for multiplying the seed that we might be sowers for the kingdom's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Just feel free to bring offerings, tithe. It's okay. That's all right. No, you can bring whichever one. No problem. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're going to get this right, aren't we? On Wednesday nights. On Sunday, it won't be hard. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Now listen, if you're part of the dream team or want to be, Friday night luau. Aloha. Oi. We, can't, we can't tell the secrets of what will be happening that night. So we want you to be here. And if you haven't yet signed up for that, 7 to 9. Uh, if you haven't yet uh, signed up, please make sure you do. Just make sure that there's, yeah, enough. I, right, we already have 125 people coming, so it's not like there's nobody coming. It's just uh, if you aren't a part of yet, if you haven't put your name in, please do so that we know that you will be there. Amen. All, all hearts and minds clear? All right. Bless you in Jesus' name.